thank you. For, thank you for the hearing. <laughs> um, ooh. It's not reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting. I've got two. One is that um, uh, David Moskin had arranged the meeting with uh, Michael uh, Berker, the annual tenant of the vote. It was a really good meeting. And Mr. Berker suggested that the two boards get together next week uh, with one topic. How is this working out? And that there's uh, I'll ask for comments from the board and, and along with the dates that you should meet. They are willing to meet at the Harvey Senior Center on uh, any day next week between 10 and 12. Can you uh, yes, I can make that. I want to give Mr. Burkhardt as many options as possible. So you can make them all. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, but I do have a question. Who on the board of commissioners met with Mr. Burkhart? I met with him and David. But the rest of the board was not notified and it, it was, was not, not a formal board action? Correct. Um, I, I the, find that very odd. Well, the formal action is taking place right now. But but it's it's after uh, David Moskin reached out without board authority, without a vote. He uh, can reach out without the board voting. He I, reached out without board authority or board knowledge, and then he and you met with Burkhart, and with the idea of, or what's come to pass is forming, uh, having a meeting between the two boards, but with no, no, I had no knowledge of it. Mr. Whitkus, have you have no knowledge of it? All right. Can we do next Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday between 10 and 2 at the senior center? Uh, I cannot meet on Monday or Tuesday because of the spring uh, state conference for housing authorities. <laughs> Oh, it'd be a time day. Yeah, uh, so we were down to three days. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. You're okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, Pamela, just so you know, that was uh, David Moskin arranged a meeting with the um, Michael Burkhart up in the Tavern. Michael Burkhart? Michael Burkhart. Yeah. And we had a great, great meeting. Michael Burkhart said it's the question of the commissioners. From Anna's and they get together with one topic. So you just take three days. Although we don't do the poll, we do at the. So okay, so I, I'm at the conference as well. You don't have to meet with me. I like the work. They actually brought this up at the Amherst uh, board meeting, and they do want me to meet with them. And he said he did tell you that, and I had other staff that was in this. Um, but I have a, there was a board member from Amherst that is also going to the conference. So it, and so it does have to follow so over. I'll be going to contact him with the three dates. It, it does have to comport with open meetings. Of course. That's one I'm asking. All right. That's going to be the form. I'm sorry, is this the conference that you suggested new commissioners go to yes. in Westboro or? Uh... Yes. Well, in Watkins, in Watkins. Yes, I'm interested in that. Well, it's actually, it's, uh, I think we can still sign you up. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a problem. Yeah, you went off and signed me up, and I said, yes, I'm interested, but I don't remember what would happen. That's on me, I guess. It starts on Sunday. Sunday? This Sunday, it was that. Mm -hmm. I can talk to you after the meeting. Okay, thank you. They would love to have you. <laughs> I eat a lot. Careful. I have a question. Are tenants allowed to go? Either one. The one with Michael Gardner. Yes. Yes. It will be a public meeting. 
Okay. So you want us to know when you can be posted. It'll be posted. Sure. Okay. Great. Thank you. It has to be posted. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, by the way, we'll be at the. Um, I'm going to have to finish the Oh, I can't because it's going to lose. We're having a hard time understanding him. Can't hear you. How's that? That's, That's better because, like I said, it's kind of muffled with, with your. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. I I have um. I wear the mask not because I'm afraid of you, but I have an immune issue, and and so it's to protect me. Okay, I thought you for me, maybe. Uh, so where were we? Notifying the tenants. It'll be a public. It'll be posted in the town. The town. In the town hall, not here. The town calendar online. Okay. And as post what do we post them and say? Okay. Yeah, do. Okay. So we put wherever open meetings are posted, we'll post it there. Okay. The Thank second you. thing not on the agenda that happened for the other appointment was that um, Harry and I met with the chairman of the Hetfield as an authority. And we had another great meeting. Um, that guy brought along um, a tenant handbook that I brought one to pass around. And also, um, the Hatfield Housing Authority Emergency Plan and Procedures. And I thought one was there in the lesson now. And uh, it was apparently put together by their part time executive director. And it looks pretty good to me. Uh, they were just passing to me. Um, now we'll go to the regular agenda. Um, Who had a little minutes not previously approved? Mm -hmm. Those are going to be the critical. Have a little minutes not approved? Just the last meeting, right, Pam? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so if we could just take that, we do complete. Okay. Are you Please. Those were the February 28th minutes? Yes. Last one. They have a correspondence and <clears throat> see the tenant survey. Dr. Billy Seapack. New comments. Right, there's none in the dog bed. And <clears throat> next to discussion. Discussion regarding <laughs> independent financial audit. Did you ask the attorney for an office on this? He does. Okay, so let me just turn on and talk about the independent financial audit. Yes, I'll talk about that, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> uh, so one of the previous meetings I had asked when the audits were done, and I was told that we had. Uh, but it's done. Uh, what I did not know is that one of the audits is called an AVP audit, an agreed upon procedures. I guess that's through the DHCD. But no financial audit has been done, other than it was commented that Gary DePace does our financial audit. Um, I find that to be a challenge since Gary DePace is our fee accountant and auditing his own work uh, would be an inherent conflict, in my opinion. So uh, I would move that we would have a four-year independent financial audit of the Hadley Housing Affairs and Records and Books, Minutes, and, and the like. Is there a second? Oh, sir. Any, any further discussion? Spectrum balances, and it's a sampling, so it's a different type of audit than I think Mary's used to. But we're it, talking about this is the main secondary, it's an independent financial audit. But now we have discussion. Going to, yeah, we're going to set them first, right? So, I'm so that's what I'm offering is that that's how it's done. So, then how are we going to? Because it's my understanding too that Michael Geiger was reached out to. He's, he's an uh, he does financial audits at the level that Harry's with him. 
and then who else do you talk to? Do you know Dr. Bill? Yes, I do. Right. So, it, and the estimate is sixteen to $20,000 per year that you're on. So, where is the housing authority going to get that money? The only thing I would add to where the housing authority will get that money is when we approve the budget, we were told by Gary to Pace that we could move items, line by line items, and find some uh, alternatives. So we'll have to look at our budget and see how we're going to pay for it. But we it's going to come out of our budget. We don't have the, the funds to, we don't have $20,000 a year. Well, I don't know if that's an exact It's It's a pretty and good guess. Frankly, I don't think we're going to use it as a brother. But you've at least said, um, Valen, who was here yesterday, said that she's going to have $20,000. Mm -hmm. It's there's not enough here you can keep taking away from services and capital for the housing authority. Well, I've made the motion, and we'll see how we're going to have to pay. I have a question. So, uh, and no one here will know the answer, so I'm asking Pamela. So, Pamela, is this a typical thing? Has it ever been done? Uh, with other housing, you know the executive directors for every housing authority in the state, but you know HCD rules, regulations, policy, independent auditing after all of the auditing that DHCD he does, in addition to the accounts, in addition to the audits conducted, like Gary Pace did our fee account, and he doesn't do audits on us, he has checks and balances. Right. We have a completely different auditor, we found. It, to me, it's unheard of and, and, and a gross abuse of funds. The funds would have to come from Hadley Housing Authority's money if. Other housing authorities are, are not subjected to this by their boards, then why would we take money away from services for our tenants and take money away from capital programming for our tenants in order to satisfy the curiosity of a board? Okay. So there is a question. She can answer my question. <laughs> So it's not it's not a normal thing unless that they unless there is um so typically if Lisa Fallon found something in the audit that raised a question, then you would go on to another audit. That it would come to a question. This is the happy housing authority follows all the movements of the UCD. With both the AUP and the PMR this year. And at our, I'm so sorry, at our level of housing authority, the size of the housing authority and the funding that we get, we are doing exactly what we're supposed to be doing to okay. I've been told recently by the chairman of that a very respectful housing board would be a good idea to vote to do this. So either a week ago, I may have been on the fence. Now I'm say they're doing this. Take your hands down. We can't understand you. How's that? Well, let's see if we can hear you now. Yes. I do have a response to your statement about having contacted another executive director of another housing authority. Would you care? No, I, you just, I didn't say executive director. I mean, chairman. A chairman of another housing authority. Would you then uh, state for the record who that is? Instead of keeping it secret from the public, yes. But automatically, Reese was saying that it's going to take money away from tenants. So if you don't have any idea when they're rearranging money, if they have to pay for an audit, that if this is taking things away from tenants, we have no idea. Number two, I wanted to let you know that I think it's important to have public point of I just I think that it's important for tenants to also look into things like COVID money. Like and things like laundry money that is being used properly, not just the monies of the everyday operation. I think what we need to do is get a list of not money. Thank you. Fifty cents deduction for board members. Well, it's conflict of interest to have your own. No, please, please, it's before right. the board. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Aaron, <laughs> <laughs> 
the motion has been made, seconded to have a, how many years? Four years. 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 In other words, yes, not quite late, but not. It's yes in theory, but depending on the cost and the financial, financial arrangement. Sure, I'll okay. take that as a further amendment. Okay, so the motion has been made, seconded, and amended to have an independent financial fund subject to our approval of a uh, cost estimate. And Yes. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying, is there any further? Can I just ask, please, in time, please, 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 Aye. Opposed? No. <laughs> okay, so it's uh, the motion carries. The next item that the agenda is um, a discussion regarding an independent attorney for the board. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, can I just get clarification on that? Is that an attorney for the board members or are you a new attorney for the housing? No, it's a great board. Understood. Is there a motion on it? Sure. I'll make the motion that the Valley Housing Authority Board seeks its own independent attorney or anything that we would come before us. For example, it would be the redrafting of the agreement. Sure. Just to clarify. And then the other legal matters that we may do. Is there a second? There's no second. There's a second. Any discussion? Any discussion? So, if I can just offer the housing authority does participate in the city's legal program. And part of that is, is that you get there is a list of attorneys and there are other attorneys other than the one that we're currently using and DHCD qualifies and vets them based on the type of issue that you may be having for instance uh, the housing authority uses Sullivan and Kings which for employment issues or uh, staffing issues there's no policy um, so that's their the advantage that they want to have is that DHCD provides additional funding uh, $3,000 for um, your representation. So thank you. We'll take the uh, business information to do mm-hmm. the next meeting. You can do the rest of the thing. No, no. You're talking about a motion to, to you're going to bring to a vote that this board of commissioners allocates funding from our Hadley Housing Authority funds to pay an attorney to represent us as a board. That's not quite right. But well, then would you clarify? Because we need to clarify that. The motion was to the board to For example, the agreement with managed. So are we ready for discussion? We're in the middle of discussion. All right. We're not talking about how we're going to fund it yet. Okay, but you're you're talking about voting on hiring an attorney without even looking at how you're going to pay for it. Uh, and if you fund it from housing authority monies, again, we're in the same situation that comes from uh, when you're talking about doing independent financial audits. You're talking about taking money away from the tenant services and taking money away from capital planning projects. You're talking about not talking to you. 
I think he could do that. Um, now, just, just so the entire board is aware, the money to pay for these things has to come from somewhere and it will come away. It will be spent for these things that there's really, it, it's a fun idea, but there is no money within housing authority budgets to take care of these things that you want to do. All right. Pamela just explained that there is another source of funding if you choose a particular kind of attorney. That's well, not what well, she you, said. Excuse That's me. not at all what she said, sir. She's explaining. She's the regional housing program that we do versus a right. So we do participate in it. If I just forget the question, I was just going to say that we have very limited funding, and there is the budget guidelines, which all been provided a copy of, and if you don't have it, you can get it to you again. But there are like guidelines, and when you can move things around, um, it does have to be within reason, too. All right. So if you, for, if, and for if you're specifically saying the management agreement, we could absolutely provide you with a copy of the list of the different attorneys that you can look at, and then you would be able to use that funding source. Um, to be. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So if the motion will get pass, by our next meeting, we could work out some of those details and come up with a, um, uh, a proposal for the board to vote on vis-a-vis -vis funding authority. Or you, not. Maybe perhaps you do what you just did with the, the previous motion where you say we're going to vote for the funding. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is that clear to everybody? Yeah, I have a question on budget. What's in the administrative on the, on the budget? So, Carrie, um, I believe you. What's in that line, item, please? Um, it's, it's kind of, it's your management piece, it's your telephone, internet expenses. Um, that's where your management agreement lies. Um, our salary would be in there. Everything. Who's salary? Make make them instead of making us on the maintenance house, we'll be honesty. Then our salaries are our management. Okay, there's motion on the table. Any further discussion? Really mm -hmm. none, of course they're better. All those in favor of the motion to have an independent legal advisor to be presented at the next meeting. We said the time is saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No. And the motion carried. The next item is the discussion regarding the chair's um, email to the board about um uh Carrie and Cumberford staff comments. I emailed the board member. I told the board that the time that the staff of the legislative delegation keeps track of the complaints or comments that they receive by phone and uh and and gave a list of those to me, which I forwarded on to the board members. Um and um among the items was um, to a clarification of the role of the individual Haley Housing Authority vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the uh, agreement with Amherst. And it's clear, and they have worked with the ACD and gotten a written um, description of what that um, authority is. And I will, when I have a chance, I will forward the DHCD's comments to all the board members. The basic point is that we have, we, the Hadley Housing Authority, has the authority within Hadley to direct, to oversee the uh, executive director of the Amherst Housing Authority. And I will forward that to you and we can discuss it further at the next meeting. Fair enough? Any further discussion on that?
Now, they're in that email, and I'm pretty sure I told you a copy of that or this to you, didn't I? The one that you were just speaking on? Yeah. Yesterday. Okay. Um, we must have policies to deal with most of those things. Do you? Right. Well, not most, not all of those things. The majority of them fall either under policy, under the lease, or under the regulations. Okay. So, could, could you, for the next meeting, uh, you, you haven't done it for this meeting? Uh, not all of them. Okay. For the next meeting, could you not look at this, that correlates their list with things for which we have policies? Sure. And to and list for which we need policies? Okay. Is that fine? Sure. Would the board agree with that? So, we, okay. so that was a great. Um, okay, discussion regarding uh, duties of the board members and the executive director. Um, the um, training manual that uh, everybody's required to. They they still can't hear. Is there a microphone? No, it, the microphone feeds the camera. I don't know if you get a microphone. You can put it at YouTube. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. I'll try to be more careful. Um, now, th there's a, needs to be clarification of the duties of the executive director and the duties of the board members. And the list is contained in the required training of the executive board members, or the, sorry, the commissioners of the housing authority. And for example, on page, they're about page 42, 43, 44. And um, I don't think we have time today to deal with those, but uh, at a future meeting, we should run through that list to make sure everybody mm -hmm. understands what their lane is. The DHCD has found that where there is dysfunction between uh, in a housing authority, it's often because the lines of responsibility have been crossed. In other words, people have stepped out of their lane and gotten involved in things that they shouldn't have gotten involved in. So I think it would be, I think it would be useful to go through that list together. Does the board agree? Yes. Lisa. Yeah. David. Yes. Okay. All right. So should we put that on the agenda for next? Meeting? Mr. Chair, maybe before we do that, you could identify the areas where there might be a blurring of responsibilities so we don't waste time on, on the areas that. I think I'm going to my beer and then it's open. On areas where there is no company. Pardon? It's a lot of what you're saying that is hard for us to understand. Is it the language or the, t or the volume of my voice? Move yourself, so I'm thinking about what Okay, well, you, I've got a solution for you. In a couple of meetings, you'll have a new chairman. And you could, you, you could, you, you could lobby for a chairman with a clearer voice. All right. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The board sat up there and we were out here. Come on, Okay. I got my thing. Okay, so. I agree we're over like this and be trying to You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome to sit there. I don't mind. Um, Again, yeah, I got my hearing, and you got a bad, you got a bad system here. Yeah, here anyway. The 
Anyhow, <laughs> system parts on concerns. Um, I would even... suggest everybody raises their voice, um, and then with the housing authority, we will certainly look into some kind of security system. But I do think it's just part of the population that needs to be speaking. So we'll look into it for the next week. Okay. Uh, amplifier. For the, for the yeah, so it, folks, if we can just um, so I'm just offering if everyone please no other talking because it does make it hard. The housing authority will certainly will get microphones and a speaker for next time. And then in the meantime, the board and myself and anyone else speaking will speak at a higher higher bar. Thank you. That's great. Let's see if we can't solve that problem together. Okay. Did Did you all hear me? And understand? Did you all understand? Did you hear? I read this. <laughs> you read this? Okay. Hand grenade left here. Tra Tracy, right? Okay. Did you understand? I didn't understand. I can read lips, but these folks can't read lips. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Uh, one of the re one of the areas where there was crossover recently, and this may be addressing some of what you're asking, David, is uh, a board member went out and apparently conducted a survey without authorization of the whole board. And that's the type of thing that um, is, is not really appropriate. Um, I'll, I'll let it go with that. Uh, no. If you are going to say a board member went out and did an unauthorized survey, you can't just leave it at that. It requires a response because that is pretty much slanderous since that's not true. So you have a tenant representative on the board. They are first and foremost a tenant. Any tenant here can conduct a survey of their neighbors which is what I did. I oh, you, even, you, you did it. I even <laughs> presented you it. You knew it, Alan. And she missed you many of them. She knew it. She didn't come oh, to every door. Excuse me. If the chair is not going to maintain order, I will ask for the public to please be silent so the rest of the public can hear what's being said. So... I conducted a survey of my neighbors. I conducted it as a tenant, and I even presented it during a board of commissioner meeting in the public comment session. So I would appreciate if you're going to make false allegations that you apologize right now for making a false allegation about me. That's right. I didn't make any allegation. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. You know you did, John. Well, listen, if apologizing, my apologizing to you will placate you, then I'll apologize. Any tenant here can conduct a survey. I know some tenants who have in the past. It's a big joke, John. You got caught in your own setup. What? We think everything is a big joke here. You work with this here. Okay. That's exactly it. I would like for you to acknowledge mm -hmm. to the tenants present that they can at any time conduct a survey, a petition, or anything they want. They can ask their neighbors what their neighbors' opinions are. You mm -hmm. have that right. Every one of you do. The board can hear it or no, but I delivered it during the public comment <laughs> session, and any tenant here can do the same. Okay, moving on. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to just say one thing. Please. I would appreciate a fellow commissioner not raising her voice and talking with proper proper delivery of the message. Okay, just raising the voice and, and all of that. Uh, I, that's not appropriate. And may I respond, Chair? Yes, I'd like to respond. Every tenant here. You're yelling again. Every tenant, uh, yes, we every, can't hear everybody who's asked to raise uh, their voice. That's a and that's why I write, that's why it's Harry, just keep open it. your mind and listen. Thank you, Lord. Uh, <laughs> every tenant here every is having some problems understanding the commissioners. I speak with a raised voice because I understand 
that many of my neighbors cannot hear what is being said. But I'll bet every single person here can hear when I speak. That's right. Okay. Uh, next, yes. The next order of business is to discuss. Did you an apology? No, not really. The next order of business is to discuss the Chosik letter, and this is at the specific request of Risa. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Fenwick. Please. Oh, can we table that for the next meeting? Please? If, if the board's willing to table it, let's just have no object. Would the board like to table that? I think we ought to discuss it right now and get done with it because I don't know when, frankly, why we're even receiving it. Um, we're not a party to any of this. I don't even know why we were presented this at the last meeting. And I've gone through it and I've got questions. And so I don't know why we have to table it. So it's on the agenda. That's fine. Okay. Is it? We're not a tenant. So the suggestion was to table it. I don't hear a motion. To, to take to table it. Is there a motion to table it? Or should we discuss it? I'm going to ask the director why she'd like to table it. Because it's it's ongoing. So it's it's an unfin it's unfinished business. There's another meeting on Friday at the Belchertown Housing Authority. And I'd like to hold it until that. I the certainly theory. have no objection. May I just ask why you were even presented with this? So Ms. Chosick sent it to both boards because we should share an executive director. The allegations were against me as the executive director, and the topic was brought up in a Hadley Housing Authority board meeting and at the Hadley Select board meeting. Okay, so you you brought it was, I didn't bring it up. You no. passed it out. No, 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 no. A tenant brought up brought it up during public conference. Who, who was the tenant? Uh, it, it, it's, it, it, it's part of the record of the Well, who, tell me who the tenant. No, we're not supposed to discuss it. it. So it's, it came up in this public, in this body, this body of meeting. Okay. Who had the paper the same day the tenant It's not a public though. comment. She why have the paper it. handed it out? It's a complete situation, but why were we even presented? Right, this? because there was it, the letter explains that there was an executive session to go over the allegations against the executive director in the housing authority. But why was that? Because share executive director she thought that it was the right thing to do to advise you look i asked her to come and explain it and she didn't she, even, I think she, you guys you folks emailed. i emailed her yes and she explained that because it, uh, we ex we share an executive director she never explained that to me so it's in the letter it clears the housing authority of any wrongdoing oh, so you 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 would, you would like to table it to the next I, meeting but if, if you don't, if you don't, yes. Table it or not? It's a grand. Table it. Table it. Table it. Table it. Okay, it's it's table. And it it goes on to the next meeting. Please. All right. Um, okay. Yeah. Now we're um, the update on the Wi-Fi. So I, I believe what you were requesting, John, on the Wi-Fi was the higher level Wi-Fi, so that for Alex's is So we are actually out to date right now. Um, when did it do in? It's a due today at two o'clock. Oh, perfect. Okay, perfect. So once the I um the I they will be coming on very quickly once we get that project um uh, that provider. So I would hope by next meeting that we have the correct Wi-Fi. Okay. Can, can we connect the vendor with Alex to make sure it's yeah. works? Okay. There's, according to the proposal, they're starting to be first of May. Oh, first of May. Okay, thank you. Okay. So we will we will work with um, Alex. Media. Okay, that's a, that sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Question for Bruce: Does that also include the Wi-Fi for this community room for the tenants' yes. access? What, what we're hiring is IT for all three housing authorities and IT support. So anything has to do with uh, you know, information technology, including Wi-Fi. Yes. So that's good news. Yeah. 
Okay, accounting for and use of laundry money. Does anyone have any comments on that? Pamela, maybe you can explain how. I'm not really sure what the, what the question is, other than so the accounting money, it, or the, the laundry money is also um, through the budget guidelines from DHCD. It's how we have to, um, how we account for it. Um, half of the funds go to the utility bill. Um, and then Harry print it off, and if you want to just take one and pass it down. This is an accounting of what transpired and why the, what the, the current balance is. As the housing only just purchased um, brand new equipment with the 21 series. Oh, you have the end. Oh, sorry. I answered that question. And then each month, the month that because... goes on the treasurer's report, which is, is um, submitted by Gary Louise. It's all the same thing. Oh, okay. Just three was stuck together. All right. So the current balance is what? Well, I, if, um, here you paste this report, it, it is um, negative $350. Because again, we're still paying off that laundry. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what the question is. How is it being Could you ask them to maybe I don't hear them. You might be a little hard of hearing, but other people are. Could you just calm down? You're really irritating me. Mr. Allen, there are people here as members of the public who continue to say that the folks over here in the members of the public are having side conversations that are disruptive. Okay. <laughs> Would you please refer? Right down there. Right down there. All right. No, nope. all right, everybody, everybody, please be quiet except, except commissioners, and and the executive director. So, that Judy that probably did yeah. You're right, and you're the reason why. Oh, brother, take a hike. All right, so picking up on the uh, Pamela, the, yes. the, the uh, laundry money. So, I, I guess it's just the accounting of it, and I guess that was the question. I, I apologize. So, is this on every month to get the treasure for it? Yeah. And um, Gary Case keeps count of it. So it is in a separate account. And that's just, that's the way it's always been done. And I think it was a, it was a question as to how long we count. Um, and it is, I just clarify, it is not in a separate oh. bank account. Right. It's, 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 it's a separate line on a separate account. account. Yes. Okay, so you're accounting for it separately, but it's not a separate bank account. You're, it, you've got a fund to set up? Um, an accounting fund, yes. not anything. An accounting fund, okay. Yes. All right, does that satisfy in the budget? No, budget. It's, um, listen, we're talking, it's not just by Sorry. Okay. Yes. Okay, uh, is that enough on the uh, laundry money for the time being? Thank you. Okay, the warrant reports. Carrie, I defer to Carrie. So, the warrant reports are where? It is in the. Okay, is there anything significant? Uh, I could comment, Mr. Chairman, since Risa and I are now meeting with Terry to go over the bills to be paid and reinitial them. 
Uh, I did have a question on uh, one of the invoices happened to come from the attorneys, but we seem to have resolved that. I believe it was a difference of an hourly rate, and everyone initialed that. And when I got to see it, I found that the uh, there were two different hourly rates for the attorney: the two seventy-five an hour and one sixty-five. And I think that has been resolved. Yes. Okay. Uh, I didn't see anything else. I don't know if uh, Risa or Treasurer saw anything else, but I would move to pay the warrants as we have approved them or paid. Is there a second? I second. All in favor, uh, any discussion? All, all in favor of the five is saying aye. 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 Uh, one thing I want to clarify is, um, is the executive director still signing checks? I did sign the last batch. Yes. Yeah, going forward. Uh, once to everyone is on the list, or um, I'm sorry, we do need a new board vote. Um, because there's um, at the last board meeting. Board vote. Excuse me, the post office. Gary, <laughs> can we come on up and take? Are you sure you're part third thing? I. Gary, <laughs> she wanted you to come up. Mm -hmm. um, what Pamela was saying is that we do need a board vote to um, add the signers to the education of facilities. I have the paperwork for Jer oh, excuse me, for David and Lisa. Um, at the last meeting, you said that you were going to be a signer on the account. Since then, you have changed your mind. So we simply need to amend the vote to move you as okay. a signer. Okay. And how long would it take you to get to the bank and get that done? The bank already has the information for Risa and David. I need the, to bring the board out to the bank, and um, then they'll be just Is that something you do today? Uh, I would have to meet them. Tomorrow, maybe. All right. Uh, it depends on when Kyle's available. Okay. So, uh, is there a motion, please, to amend the original uh, motion that had all commissioners on it and to just David and Risa. Oh, Harry. Harry. Rich, David, and Risa. Right. Okay. So is there a motion to amend? So so Richie and Pamela are, are, are already on the bank account. They will be on the bank account. There's no. not going to be signers on the bank account. Um David and Lisa need to be why would Pamela stay on the bank account? For what purpose? I have money comes out of your chief financial office. As the executive director, I'm going to keep the financial officer in the house. Okay. 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 Okay
Any board members have anything to jump in? Mr. Chen. Yeah. I, I would ask you guys if there's anything unusual to be brought to our attention at the meeting. If there was an unusual expense that wasn't anticipated, or something ended up being much more expensive, or you saved a bunch of money, just please bring to our attention anything that surprised you or you know, wasn't expected. Thank you. Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, Mr. Mothkin has asked if there was anything that jumped out. The two, actual two times I sat with Carrie, uh, our accountant. And yes, there was something that jumped out. I found out that Hadley Housing Authority checking account was down to around $10,000 because we had not received our subsidy from DHCD because this board of commissioners had failed to approve warrant reports, quarterly reports, uh, the, the, tre uh, the fee accountants report, the financial statements, et cetera, over the course of months. That triggered Hadley Housing Authority not receiving their subsidy from DHCD, which meant our checking account was very low. There were, may I continue, yes, Mr. You can Chair? Continue. There, there were bills that could not be paid because there wasn't enough money in Hadley Housing Authority's checking account because, best as I could figure, the Board of Commissioners, a quorum, had refused to make these approvals. This caused us, well, caused Carrie to have to not pay certain bills. Now, this is unprecedented. Hadley Housing Authority has paid bills upon receipt. Carrie has a history and previous accounting is a history of paying the bills every two weeks upon receipt. But this particular board of commissioners put us in a very bad way. And... Um, I think we need to reflect on that. And going forward, we need to do the business of the housing authority, which is limited to legal financial fiduciary oversight of the executive director and policy and procedure instead of dabbling in the complaints of a couple of tenants that are best handled by going through the proper channels according to the grievance, process, uh, grievance procedure. What is the amount of the check that we did not receive? Carrie? Um, they actually did finally um, send us some $75,000 after just March 15th. March 15th? But we had to request that, didn't we? Because, because the monies, the, the approvals, the, the board failed to approve the quarterly reports, financial statements, warrant reports. Our usual subsidy there had to be a special request for the subsidy. It doesn't make the housing authority staff look bad. It makes this board of commissioners look very dysfunctional. Okay, but everything is fine now, right? It's all fixed. Well, I, I wasn't, yeah, I was on the floor with 75,000, so we just keep going. Well, unfortunately, we have. Get down here. Yeah, that's what David was asking. Is there anything on you? That's why I spoke well, up. Well, but he asked the question of Joe. This is how it So David, do you have So a hazard hasn't been resolved. I'm having a little trouble finding uh, whether or not you have the money that you should have at this point, or you're still waiting for money. So they developed in advance um, a spoli for our subsidy. They advance us throughout the course of the year. And normally it would come like every couple of months you get a chunk of change deposited, but they did with the wind for months. I don't have the entire situation here. I was unable. There's, as she said, I pay all the bills I have every two weeks, um, and I was unable to pay two invoices um, over $20,000 because I have So right now you're, uh, everything's back. To normal or, or I want to say normal now, but I do have the funds. You do have the funds, okay. 
So I'm sorry, what, I don't want to miss this. So why are things not back to normal? I guess we'll have to wait and see. If I get my deposit in a couple of months, as I know, um, we've caught up and I've been able to file because you approved the budget, you approved your quarterlies. Um, so I was able to, right. I can't file those without your board vote. So you've got all the votes you need now. Right now. The next thirty first ends our next quarter. So if you were to promptly approve the for the lease at your next meeting, hopefully we'll get back on track. Good. Well, thank you for taking the time to get all of us on the board up to speed, especially the new people that needed to understand what was going on with the numbers and to make sure that um, they understood what needed to be done. I'd like to just say one word even for 30 seconds or less. Our board training tells us repeatedly that our job is to be skeptical. I think I mentioned this before. So when you're agreeing to volunteer to be a board for the town and the housing authority, you're really just up here somewhere trying to work on policies. Policies, I sat with Tamla yesterday, and she explained that policies do come up from operations. And... Um, uh, and that was good for me to hear. Some people think the policymakers don't pay attention enough to what's going on. But in housing authorities, it's up to the, um, the operating people to let the commissioners know what kind of policies they need put in place so the place runs. I'm not mad at anybody for needing to come to an understanding of what was going on with the numbers before they signed off on them. I apologize for the board taking a little extra time and you having to reapproach the um, the housing, the board, DHCD, to get the money. But I hope you're a little patient with new people getting up to speed. I think it's, I'm thankful that they want to be careful with the money. Okay, sorry. Wait, wait over 30 seconds. Okay. Um, I think that sounds like, to me, it's resolved. Um, going ahead. To the property manager's report, the unit vacancy report. Mm -hmm. I, was that I, I was Was there an actual vote? We actually oh. took a vote by the treasurer. The treasurer's one was unless it's a blue ribbon. I know there's a blue there. Gary's report is just information. So we're all set? Yes. We can move that. Okay. Um, unit vacancy report, then please. <clears throat> We have vacancies. Um, so we're doing very well building our um, vacancies. We did a few transfers for reasonable accommodation. Um, good reason. Um, two. Two. Um, yeah, watch that. Come on. so busy. So, and we just. As of this moment, now we have um, one vacant, and we transferred creating another one. So we're still back at two vacancies. And um, we are in the vetting process at the end. We are at the um, we are at the final stage of filling the. Um, one at the Berkeley, and we are um, still in construction on the Dyer Berkeley one. So we're doing well with our vacancy. Thank you for your report, and I appreciate your sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. You gotta laugh. <laughs> you have to about that. There you go. Uh, the tenants account receivable report. So looking at this, we have um, 32 residents that are paying in full um, at the, the 667 building. Six residents are returning mm -hmm. one month, and three residents are in housing stores for five. So we bring them to housing stores. Factors other than no rents. We bring them into, we have Going to 
Mm -hmm. and, and also the, the cause is also there are other these violations in addition to the being visually so which works out I and mean, we had um and we have three three tenants that are on repayment agreements that are working out there so um and then at the 705 development um, we did have a one thing in the middle and the two in the middle. Or, and she was paid out the rent. So, um, and you'll see that. Uh, and so, we're going to have a car and have people pay out the rent. And we're going to have That's what I'd like to get. Anything else? No, no, no. Any questions from the board? Okay, um, the window replacement project. Do you want something? And we're very excited about this. Your window project is planning. Right, right. And so um, the housing authority receives roughly around 70000 a year for formula funding, so it's taken a few years to come up with 192000 to do the window project. Um, it's been a process, but um, we went to bid on the window project. It was very close between the first and second place. The second place um, base bid actually won the project because we're including alternate one, which is replacing the wood out in front of the windows, so that it doesn't rot out with, uh, with the material that, that will last. So that's what the ultimate one is when you look at the bids. You'll see you know, the second one is winning the bid instead of the first one. But that's because we had funding um, supplemented to this project from CPA, which is the Community Preservation Act mm -hmm. in Adley. So CPA supplemented it and allowed us to do the alternate as well, uh, which is great because that's how you use we don't have to work on those, you know, that, that wood falling out right after we get new windows. We just kind of start replacing wood. So what we will need for that project is um, we come recommended from Bradley Architect, the architect that has vetted the um, construction, uh, diversified construction services. So what we would need is a board vote approving the award to diversified construction services for the window project. Nice. Is there such a, uh, uh, a motion? I move we accept the, uh, say the word. Recommendation. Yes, of Bradley Architects recommendation for diversified construction services. A second? Second. Yes. I'm trying to amendment to include the dollar amount. Oh, yes. A little bit of, do you see that? Yeah. Uh, including the amount $192,850 be accepted. Okay, so is there a motion to accept the amended motion? I'll make a motion. The motion to be made. Is there a second to the okay. and a second? This is to the amended motion. Yeah. Any further discussion? Hearing none, please vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I said I. I okay, so that's unanimous. Good, thank you very much. Uh, work order report. So the work order report, what I do is just so you see a real idea what's going on in the last two months of the big work orders. I just provided as information the votes required. I don't answer any questions about it. Just a vision for you. No, uh, what's being done around Good. Thank you. I don't think we need to approve that. We just accept it, right? Okay. Yes, please. Mr. Musk. I sat with uh, Pamela yesterday, probably most of an hour. I'm sorry, Pamela, to interrupt your day. I was just picking up my package. 
and we talked about issues and uh, one of the number one issues for me has been just things safe here. Was this really a secure environment for the tenants? And uh, we talked about cameras and what kind of issues there might have been over the years that would justify the expense of cameras. And I understand that nobody likes to be on camera and places that have too many cameras are kind of intimidating. And uh, I guess I'm putting it up for discussion, especially for Bruce and Pamela and all of you. How would you feel about more cameras? Now, I don't want to get involved with operations here, but I'm making the suggestion that the um, administration and the tenants consider more of these little Wi-Fi cameras. They're very cheap. They get hooked up to a computer, and the computer records, you know, let's say, so uh, each night, whatever activity the cameras are seeing. And if there's been no trouble, you, you delete, you know, that night or that week or whatever. So um, I understand you have cameras up here. But they got taken out by the American Civil Liberties. She put them back in. in. We got removed by the American Civil Liberties. She put them back in. Okay. So again, I don't want to attend this so talk. You have to know the whole support. Oh, you know. Okay. So um, I don't know how the ACLU works. Uh, but um, if you, the tenants, say, yeah, we would like that. We would feel better. There are people walking around at night that we don't know. Um, I think uh, some of us have worked with Bill Newman before at the ACLU. My daughter worked for the LCLU. She's an attorney. Uh, I, I would guess that if the tenants say we we're, we okay, you know, we're okay with this. No. Anyway, I'm sorry. So, Sue, I just, um, I, people don't want people to help me. Just the share, please. Yeah. What I want to say is, I'm not in here, but the safety room, everybody kind of checks on everybody. And because now there's a fence behind our, you know, homes, we don't have the rail trail coming in. So, I sometimes leave my back door and the front door on. There has never been a problem. We all help each other. Okay. Everybody, at least the ones that I know, we feel pretty safe here. Right, and, see, if you if you speak for for the population, then I should just shut up, I guess. Well, me, no, because if something did happen, let, let me suggest this something. Yeah. Rather than have the discussion here, okay. Would you be willing to meet with us, some tenants to discuss the issue? Uh, or yeah, why don't you just say, Tracy, maybe you could just ask for that falls under the daily operations of Amherst housing. I mean, honestly, please, gentlemen. It seems like you three keep voting, and you always, you just look like you're staring at the stars. What we need is people together, because this, again, is our home. And you are addressing two or three people, and you think that's for the majority, and it truly is not. This is a great community, and I can tell you there's a number of people in here who have no problem coming and asking me to change a tire, to fix their bicycle tire to make sure that their parents have food at night and are eating dinner. Good. There's a lot of things that we do. We feel safe because, you know, I, I walk around sometimes at night. I've had more than 20 surgeries, and I've got to move. Good, thank you. Otherwise, I feel so Yes, we feel safe. All right. Mr. Chair, we do. Yes, All right. He's so, having towards something better. Okay, I'm not going to disagree with you. I'm really happy to hear everything. It is. is. This, this is a beautiful place. Good. Tracy, what I'm thinking is, cameras are one of those things where you don't need them until you need them. So if something did happen here, and I don't want to worry about the cameras. If, if everybody's in agreement, and the tenant, everybody I should shut they up. Have speed dial, nine one one speed dial. They're police here almost every chair. So more information. Okay, we can talk more about it. We will. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Are, you, are you okay, Tracy? Oh, I'm fine. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just like you to do your jobs, pay the bills, make sure everything is running fine, and let the day-to-day -day operations be hammered up between Amherst Housing and the day-to-day -day operations. I don't know anybody who has been here who can't go to somebody and ask, hey, look, this is broken, don't fix it. Mr. Chief. Okay. Mr. Chief. Wait a minute. Go ahead, Lisa. Okay, so this... This, I think Tracy is exactly right. This is more of a day-to-day -day operations decision, which uh, our managing agent has been very good about having tenant chats. And then the tenants come together with the 
with our executive director and we come up with a solution. But whether or not to have more video cams or have more or less is not within the purview of the Board of Commissioners. It's a day-to-day -day operations thing. I agree with you. There's no debate about that. I yeah. just bring it up as a thought. Because <laughs> but this is, a, this is a tenant chat issue with the executive director. Fine. Okay. Yes, please. No, wait, please. Just wait a minute. Oh, no, I it's a bird. Tracy got to talk. Oh, I want to be a shit. Please, folks. So, if this is day to day, it would be as it, it is. That clock is an hour behind. It is day to day. Um, it is, but it, it can be put into a policy. And with all due respect, I, I absolutely understand where the tenants are coming from. We need to have a better conversation about this in our thoughts board. But when Mr. Moshkin and I were speaking yesterday, we were talking about different types of policies, and I brought up security cameras. So Mr. Moshkin is just going or laying on a conversation. So please don't attack the messenger. Yeah. <laughs> well, we will. I, I do agree that it should just go in a tenant chat, and then we really feel it should be a policy. Okay. You want that. So it'll come to us if, it, if appropriate. Yes. Okay. Yeah, probably yeah. policy and funding. Yeah. I just wanted to say one thing. It's very important that you know, and I'm just saying you know because it got pushed aside when I said it a minute ago, that our channels in this particular room, not the whole community center, got taken out by the American Civil Liberties, and we got taken over by Emerson and came back. Yeah, that's one of the things you have to understand. And, and we have heard, this is all hearsay, that the camera film has been tampered with when people have to go into court. Where the, where, where the, okay. Was the okay. Was the so what's the use of having the powers that people are going to be tampering with the films? That's in that language. Okay. So, um, so you're making it, when you're bringing these things up, you have to know the history of what we're dealing with. Okay. Um, so clearly this is an issue not to be discussed so much in this board meeting, okay? You guys need to sit down, talk it out, sit around the table, get it worked out. Find common ground. Yep. There you, there you go. There you go. Let me just explain one thing, Tracy. I'm, I'm sorry if I, if it sounds like I'm trying to tell the administration what to do. When I was asked to run and I got appointed to governor's office, the first thing I thought was, all right, housing authority. I don't know anything about housing authorities. What should my first concern be? My first concern should be that the place is safe. So that's why this came up. Okay. So you need to sit down and talk to Tracy and come to a common agreement. No, th this is this is something for the not between any individual board member and tenants. That's overstep. It needs to stay between the tenants. We have a vehicle for it called tenant chats. We have the the uh, administration, the executive director, the staff have meetings with tenants. That's the appropriate vehicle. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, thank you very much. Um, rent collection policy. Is that next? Okay. Yep. So the so the rent collection of, at the last meeting you have formed a, a subcommittee with uh, Rita and uh, Richard. And the three of us met, and they went through that entire packet that the board was presented with um, the memo, the outlining of uh, the different types of po what's within the policy, with an example of other policies. And they worked on it, and they came up with a policy for um, submitting. There are no real big changes in the rent collection policy compared to the one that the um, Board of Commissioners for Hadley approved in 2006. Um, what's better about this policy, it's more detailed. It, it explains the different nuances of the, how rent is collected, um, how the means of how you can pay your rent, how it's applied to your account. There's a lot more information for both um, the residents and also for the staff on how they have to apply. And it's all, um, it all follows mass regulation. Um, mass law and also the bar lease, the DHCD standard lease. Do we need to vote to approve it? Or? You would, yeah, because this is a okay. Place. I think we should read it and then yeah. we just got it now. Disgusting. Okay, so we'll put it on the agenda for next week, next month. Okay, sure. Yeah. 
Fair enough. Sorry. So and this was our package. It was. Yeah. I didn't know it was a new a new rental oh. policy, so I just thought it was our. Okay, so I put it on the agenda for next next meeting. Um, now the wage match update. That if I could just try to explain that. All that's saying is that the DHCD and the DOR have worked out a way to link their databases to make it easier, more effective, more um, uh, less error prone uh, in in the evaluation of tenant um, approval. Uh, tenant and applicant, correct. So, um, but we do need to vote to uh, accept it. Right, so it's, it outlines the, it's a public housing notice, and public housing notices are online um, at DHCD, and they're public. Um, so it's a public housing notice that outlines, as, as John was just saying, um, and then uh, it's, it does talk about training, too, that the, we have to ensure that the staff is trained. And I did want to just relay that there's only three people in the Amherst Housing Authority office that have access to wage match, and that is myself, Mary Billion as Director of Public Housing, and Erin Cassidy as Director of Lease Housing. There are no other employees. But we've taken the updated training, uh, and then there is a part for you, John, to sign off that has been presented in the all right, let's see if we can get a vote, and I'll be glad to sign it this morning. Um, is there a vote to it? And by the way, it's a DHCD. We don't have much choice. Exactly. All right, exactly. so is there a motion to accept this? Um, this I'm the, well, you go ahead. You. I'll make a motion. There you go. I'll second. All right, the motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor of accepting the DHCD policy? Signify by the same Aye. 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 All right. It's unanimous. Does it need to be in the other panel? Yeah, that would be absent. Here you go. We're coming to the end. Yeah. <laughs> I think that is the end. Uh, public public comments? Sure. No, no, why? We don't have you know, no agendas are handed out anymore when you come to these meetings. Everybody used to get an agenda. And I'm requesting now, Pam Freak, the agendas for the last three years that we've been taken over by uh, Amherst Housing. If we can have the agendas for the last three years, not, not the minutes, just the agendas. Mm -hmm. Also, I wanted to, um, about subsidies, I've been to many board meetings where they've talked about the, the board and the, the housing authorities having to wait months and months and months and months for subsidies to be paid to the housing authority, six months, eight months. So today, when, when the board was chastised because there's, they were slower and not voting on things, we, then why would we told over and over again, it's not unusual for having to wait for hundreds of thousands of dollars. And it, and, it, and I, why was that brought up? I have it in my notes, I, have, I saw it on YouTube. So why is it that all of a sudden you're made to feel like you did something when it's not unusual for having to wait for DHCB to lay out this money. Also, as far as reasonable accommodations go, I mean, that was one of our new uh, policies that we enacted like maybe six months ago. A reasonable accommodation, if somebody needs a reasonable accommodation, like for instance, a handicapped bathtub or something like that, they put it in and there's a whole procedure for it. Now what happened is, and I'm not mentioning names, somebody here who put in for a reasonable accommodation, instead of getting that a reasonable accommodation, she was forced to move across the street. So in other words, at her expense, she had to move to another apartment. No one who's handicapped or elderly. That's what you're supposed to say. Thank you for your comment. Thank you. And yeah, so I know that. Here, I've asked for change of apartments that needed reasonable accommodation, that did need reasonable accommodation. And so many people have moved around over the years. And then we see lately the people who are given the newer apartments are people that, you know, 
It's just they pick and choose who the people are. Yeah. You can have your name on this for months and months and months and years. Why don't you get another apartment? And you're not given one. And that somebody can be in here for three years when you're here for 20, and we're just given the apartment. As far as reasonable accommodation goes, I would like to have Pam and Mary answer this question. Why wasn't people's apartments made into a handicapped accessible apartment? Why did a person have to move across the way to get these handicapped things that are rightfully theirs? And that's something I want to bring up at the next meeting. I want to have it added to the agenda. Also, I brought this board because living here 20 years and asking the same questions over and over and never getting any answers or giving these half ass answers, I thought if we get one of these giant boards, this is just a replica, where we'd have questions, we can, we can ask one of these questions at every meeting, get to the bottom of these questions, and then wipe them off our list. You know, for instance, like the $65 lockout fee. We went from a zero lockout fee to a $65 lockout fee. Oh, oh. So what I want to say is, was locked out on the ghetto. So what I wanted to say is, how do we go in the low income housing authority from a zero to a $65 lockout fee? And then when I ask questions about it is, where does this money go? And does everybody actually pay this lockout fee? Or is it like how this place runs? You might pay one. You might pay one, but I don't pay the $65 lockout fee because there's never been a lot of fairness here as far as, you know, who gets the lockout fee and who doesn't. So when we ask questions about a lockout fee, we want to know where does this $65 go to? Is everybody who has the $65 is charged $65 when they get locked out? We never have How many minutes does she get? Just a minute, please. Three minutes. No. She's been on well, the drive. I'll have more time. Thank you. All right. So wrap it up, please. So anyway, I thought it would be a great idea if the Hadley Housing Authority oh, invests in one of these boards, you know, the one that's on a solar horse. We can start making lists and get some answers to some of our questions. Because so many times we call, we write, we text, we get no answers. Okay. Thank so you. So that's what I want to do. Thank you for your comments. Why are you telling her what to say and what not to say? And why did you let her call the office member telling the tenant what not to say? Wait a minute. Why did you let her call the office? She decided to cut me off. But she's telling her no, I, what not to I, say. I, the board, if you look on the agenda, which should be available to you, it's online. You can get it here. I'm sure the office will give you a copy of the agenda. It says that public comments are acceptable but that the board will take the comments under advisement. I'm not asking for any comment. I'm just asking for why, who decides what the amount of time somebody has. And for her to say that I'm too long. The, I mean, the chairman, the, I didn't pay any attention to anything. Right. Okay. Just, just one more thing. When you brought up, <laughs> I, but when you brought up today, when Reese brought up the- uh, Come on, John, come that's on. your friend. When Reese brought up the, uh, the going around door to door with this, uh, survey. She, what I brought up before the meeting is she didn't go to everybody's door. Also, she told people that if we didn't stay with in our right, right, all right, all right. who's our services? Okay. Yeah, they're That's missing. land rest. She did say it happened on tape. Don't play. So anyway. Okay. Thank you very much for your comments. Are there any other comments? Yes. yes. Please, can we get to this lockout fee? And what Reese was living to me is don't say names. So I'm not going to say names. I'm going to tell you the policy. And so everybody here knows the policy, okay? You get locked out once in a year. You don't get charged $65. You get locked out twice in a month. We're going to say, now you need a lockbox. Now you need to secure your key another way because when it happens on a Sunday, they have to pay somebody time and a half. If it's during the week, three hours mandatory, they get paid for it. So what I'm saying is there is policy in there and nobody here who's been locked out has been charged. They haven't. So to go ahead and jump and say we're getting charged to the wrong. I didn't say that. I said, I just said, we don't know. We, we right. don't know. That is wait a minute, policy. wait a minute. Tracy, Tracy, Tracy. That's the policy, folks. Okay. Nobody's getting one of the, charged. One of the, as I've handed out to the board, and you guys are welcome to a copy, one of the great things that Hatfield does is it gives all the tenants a handbook. 
Hatfield. I know. We had, we had him. Well, would that address some of your comments, Tracy? Sure. Okay. You know, okay. Yeah, what we'll have some him, but... though is that we have you idea. have some tenants who just go ahead and get one bit of information and add to it without researching it. Yeah, very I would like to address that I was with my neighbor last summer sitting outside when she got locked out. When I called the office, the number that's on there, and lockups are considered an emergency. We do have a uh, maintenance on our phone during the week. During the week. So it's mm -hmm. not enough to be. However, what I was told was that all the locksmen, all the locksmen, here's a 90 year old woman locked out of her apartment, low income, very well income, locked out, and they're telling me $65 lockout fee from the, the, uh, lock, the um, okay. lockout company. This is not true, what you just heard. Okay. There is a $65 lockout. Okay. The, the issue is not board stuff. Yeah. That is executive director stuff. You guys work it out. It's not, don't bring it to the board. Okay? Sure. Thank you. It's a policy. policy. If it's a policy, policy that's never right. Okay. No, it doesn't. Not. It has to go through the grievance process first. Board. You just signed one, and without the policies do go to the board. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Don't bring it to the board directing. Okay. And thank you for your comments. Any any further public comments? This is our home. Most of us are going to die. Okay. Let's. So thank you. All we want is this. Hello. Good for you. Thank you. Yes. I'd like to speak. Please. Okay. When I came into this meeting today, and I listened to the agreement, and it was a false apology. When I came into this meeting today, I was, uh, there was one gentleman sitting here. I don't know his name. It's not important, his name. When I came into this meeting, That's... when I came into this meeting today, he was very hostile. And he said, what are you doing here? And uh, uh, I'm an advocate, and I have the right to speak. I am not an independent advocate here. I have to speak, it. and I have the right to speak. So when I came in here, he was very, very angry. What he, and I had to immediately, I was on the defense. And uh, Reese, you were, uh, why are you shaking? That, it, okay. I am not going to respond. If you have a complaint, please take it to the executive director. It's inappropriate. Or you could come to me personally. But this is not what public comment section. It, you're bringing up, she's bringing up a tenant who cannot defend themselves. All right. You're letting her go on. I'm sorry. Thank you for your comments. Well, you're going to have to bring the issue to the executive director, please. That it's wonderful that new people are coming to meetings and welcome as an advocate, all new people that are coming to meetings. I want to bring up this thing about the uh, survey that was taken. I would like to make a comment on the survey. No. Which survey? The survey that Reese uh, No. No. What do you mean, no? no? I did that as a tenant. I it know, is not a board I matter. I would just like to say, so I wouldn't give him what to do. Okay. Um, I, I think I, I cannot speak on John, let her talk. Just, wait, a just a minute. Just, just a minute. It, it, briefly, what's the issue? The issue is, is that when this survey was taken, I believe that the tenants were intimidated. Okay. Because they were told information. But and okay. But the, the, the tenants... The, the tenants did not complain, as far as I know. Yes, we did complain. We complained about intimidation. Who did you complain to? We complained about intimidation. Well, that's not the right way to do it. Well, we did that. We filed a grievance with the... One more comment. One more comment. That's it. Okay. 
I think that the newsletter where people are not allowed to have the freedom of negative thoughts should be abolished. And the reason I think that is this community code of conduct. Yeah. If you have nothing to say, don't say nothing at all. I think that that really goes against civil liberties. Yes, I'm being. I I am trying to enforce. Well, she's putting in. She's putting in. You're not. No, I'm the chairman, and I am saying that that is not board business. We have a procedure. Tracy is right. We have a procedure, and you've got to follow the procedure. Okay. Otherwise, it isn't going to work. And I. So I am shutting her down because it's not board business. But all the other stuff wasn't board business either. All right. Well, that, that's my judgment. The show. They're going to keep going. We need a next meeting. Yeah. And then they'll start calling me. <laughs> okay, so we need to fix the next meeting date. John, I want to say one thing. Do we want to do it? Play. I know it sounds a little right, but I'd like to play with one sentence. I can't believe it's even finish one sentence. But finish one sentence. I, we have to play with one set of rules because if one tenant is allowed to speak about something, I'm not getting Okay. You're done. Okay. 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 All right. All right. Now, the next meeting date is what? I, I, I move that we make the next meeting date the last Tuesday. In April. What's the date, That'd please? The 25th at 11 o'clock. Do I hear a second? Is there a second? I'll do a second. There's All a right. second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. Aye. aye. And the meeting is adjourned.